In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to plot a continuous function. Up to this point, we've been plotting observed data points. Now, a continuous function is also uh, how we plot theoretical data. So to start with, I need some theoretical data. I'm going to start with x equals uh, 0 to 2 pi. Because for this example, we're just going to plot a sine function, a simple sine curve. I'm going to have y equals the sine of x. Remember, if our x had been in degrees, we would need uh, the sine d instead of sine x, because that's sine in degrees. And then here I'm going to say plot x comma y. Now I want to see how this worked out before we start adding formatting, so let me just run this section. And here's what I start with. I have this jagged sawtooth curve. Remember that when we defined arrays, and we had a single dimension array, a row vector, just like we have here, that we had a starting value and a stopping value, and MATLAB automatically stepped by one. So here we're telling MATLAB, start at zero, stop at two pi, but MATLAB is going to step by one each time. So zero, then one, to two, to three, to four, and five, and six. Now we need this to be a much smoother curve for it to be a sine curve, and we want it to go out to the real two pi because we want to see one entire period of this curve. So I'm going to break this up by uh, 0.1. So we'll say now I have a starting value, now I have a stepping value, and now I have an ending value. And over here in my workspace, I can see that x used to be, uh, let me just hover over, used to be a 1 by 7 double. Okay, so it's a 1 by 7 array. I run this now, I get a much smoother curve, and I also see that over in my workspace, I have a 1 by 629 array. So, okay, so now we've made a much smoother curve. Let's go ahead and add some formatting. We'll say, oops, uh, X label. And the X label is going to be uh, frequency. We'll call that F. We'll say it's in Hertz. I need a Y label. We'll say this is amplitude. And we'll say that's in centimeters. Oops, wrong order. There we go. That's also not how you spell Y label. Um, we'll say title. And we'll say the sine curve. Um, oh yeah, we need a grid, grid on. And there we go. So let's get rid of the extra parentheses. And now when I plot this, here's what I have. Now again, we have a problem here because we want to, you know, have our, our, we want to see one period, right? So we want to start at zero, end at two pi. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to say axis. Remember that axis, if we type help space axis, gives me my first version, an array that has four values in X min, X max, Y min, Y max. Well, my X min is going to be zero. My Y max is, I'm sorry, my X max is going to be two pi. My Y min, let me say, so we went from negative one. Let's go ahead and go from negative two to two. Give us a little space. Um, when I plot this, now I have one full sine curve. But one other thing is missing, since we're building on our, our understanding each time. Um, normally when we see a sine curve plotted, there's an x-axis, and here there isn't an x-axis. So let's go ahead and add an x-axis. We'll type hold space on, and we're gonna plot. Now, I need an x beginning and an x end. Well, that's zero and two pi because we want our x-axis to go from 0 to 2 pi. Then I need y values, because when we're doing this x and y stuff, you'll see that over here I have an, uh, an array of x values that's 1 by 629, and I have an array of y values that is 1 by 629. So we're just plotting ordered pairs. So here I have an x, uh, x value 1, x value 2, so now I need two y values. Well, the y value for the x-axis is just, you know, 0 and, and, and 0. So the next thing is I want it to be black because I want it to be an axis. Um, we'll handle method two in a minute, but if I plot this section, now I have my sine curve and x-axis. It starts at zero, ends at two pi, and it's continuous the entire way. Now that's the first way to do this. The second way is to use a different function. Um, I am gonna want all of this information, so I am going to copy it and paste it down below because that's all of my formatting and that's everything that I need. Um, but the second, is instead of using plot, we're gonna use something called fplot. Now there's an old way to do fplot and a new way. I'm gonna show you both very quickly. Um, up here I have y equals sine of x. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it down below. But I need this to be a string, so I'm gonna put apostrophes on both sides. Then I'm gonna say comma. My x values went from zero to two pi. Now this time I don't want 
I do not want my step value. I just want an array of where I want to start and where I want to stop. Now I used that array when I defined my x axis. So here I have f plot of a string, the sign of x. And when you use f plot, you have to make sure you only have one dependent variable. I'm sorry, independent variable. So x is my only independent variable. It's going to start at a value of 0 and at a value of 2 pi. And the f plot function is going to plot or evaluate the sign of x along a continuous interval between 0 and 2 pi. When I run this, here's what I get. I have the exact same figure, but I have an error that pops up. And it's not an error, it's a warning. It says that the character input to f plot will be removed in future versions. Use f plot at x sign x instead. Okay, what does that mean? It means this, that if I would like to, and this is the web page, okay, um, that if I would like to plot this information, that, hmm, how do I define intervals here? I'm sort of learning on the fly as well. I only want it to go from 0 to 2 pi, so you know what? Let's just do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this entire thing. I'm going to paste it down into method 3 because method 3 is where I wanted to show you the new f plot. Let's get rid of all of this information. It tells us we need to use at sign x. So, I'm sorry, at x. And then I need the sign of x. Let's run this and see what happens. And because I guess I constrained my axis here from 0 to 2 pi, uh, we got um, an interval from what we got. Uh, I want to suppress this really quickly. We'll run it. And now what we have is from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. So that's fun. So now we have, well, almost one period, almost the second period. So we didn't make it too full because um, we'd have had to go right back up. So I don't know how MATLAB, when it does this, determines the interval over which to uh, evaluate our function continuously. So if we just constrain the axis like we did here in our axis command from 0 to 2 pi on the x from negative 2 to 2, then hopefully the evaluation interval for f plot appears. Um, but for right now, this is the old way of using f plot. And this is the new way of using f plot. So um, that's f plot. This is how we plot continuous functions. Uh, in our next example, we're going to plot multiple continuous functions. So till next time.